Aaron Quinn has just had the worst night of his life. His 29-year-old girlfriend, Denise Huskins, has just been kidnapped for ransom. But the police are convinced the person responsible for harming her is Aaron himself. In fact, they believe he killed her. When they believe that Denise essentially has been murdered, the police notify her parents and, and tell them that, that she's missing. The detective told me to expect the worst. And I said, wow. So of course I was shaken. He did not have one nice thing to say about Aaron. He thought everything that was coming out of his mouth was a lie. You want me to go tell her family that she's dead? Because that's what I'm prepared to do. I'm going to go tell them that I'm not looking for a live Denise. I'm looking for dead Denise. It did feel like I am some character in this crime drama. I'm like in a movie. I'm living a nightmare right now. There's blood in your house. There's blood? Yeah. Okay. I knew there was an old stain on my sheet. I had washed those sheets multiple times. It was just a small stain that I wasn't able to get out. Little did I know, a quarter-sized blood stain was going to mean that was a murderer. Because this is a kidnapping, the FBI is involved. And an FBI agent asks Aaron if he'd be willing to take a lie detector test. You took a polygraph. I, I think if I wasn't so sleep deprived, I would, I would have said no, because I know they're nonsense. He keeps cooperating because he wants their help in finding Denise. All right, Aaron, there's no question in my mind that you failed this test. And you failed it miserably. It's not even close. At this point, Aaron, who has not had sleep, has this officer that is now barraging him with questions. Tell us what happened to her. Let's get her family closure. I did not do anything. OK. I did. I, I'm pretty sure maybe you did. Maybe I you did, didn't did do, do Maybe you I didn't, didn't do anything. anything maybe maybe she something happened to her that you didn't plan. Maybe she, I don't know. You tell me. I, but it can't start with three guys showing up at the house taking it, taking her away. That's not what happened. You know where she is. I don't know where she is. At one point, I actually started doubting my own sanity. And I thought maybe, maybe I did have a schizophrenic breakdown. I want you guys to find her. I don't know where she is. He's run out of road. He's exhausted. He's traumatized. And he, he, he thinks that he's going to get arrested for murder. Finally, he says, look, there's nothing more I can tell you. And I, I guess I need a lawyer. What's that? I guess I need a lawyer. We're done. They convinced my brother to come in, and they are hoping that he can get a confession from me. You Aaron. see Ethan walk into that room with Aaron. And um, Aaron just grabs onto Ethan, and he just starts sobbing. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. I know it's is the craziest thing. I just start crying because there was someone there who actually wanted to help me. He says, I'm going to get you an attorney. It's like 6.30 in the morning. Ethan was just calling around and came up with Dan's name, Daniel Russo. And Dan ended up being in the office already. The phone rings. I pick it up. He says, my name is Ethan Quinn. My brother's being held by the loyal police. He needs a lawyer right away. I said, OK, uh, I'll put my suit on. Dan Russo is a scrappy fighter. He's the guy you want to represent you if this happens to you. There seems to be a stream of blatant lies coming out. He's from the Bronx. He's got a thick accent. He says whatever he wants. He has basically died and gone to hell. I know the police officers, and I say, OK, uh, is he under arrest? Well, if he's not under arrest, it's time to say goodnight, Gracie. And then I took Aaron back to the office. And then he told me the whole story. And it was hard to believe. We all cried and cried. I think the thing that really got to me was when Dan Russo gave us a bail bondsman card. It never crossed my mind that he might need to be bailed out. I, I told him, look, this is going to be a nightmare, and there's no way you're going to be able to pinch yourself and wake up. That is, unless there's some sort of proof that Denise is actually still alive. 
And later that day, that is exactly what arrives. At about 12.30 on March 24th, something incredible happens. The San Francisco Chronicle actually gets a message from the kidnapper with what's called proof of life. My name is Haskins, I'm kidnapped. Otherwise, I'm fine. It's Denise's own voice, so we know that she is still alive. And she gives information relevant to present day. She talks about a plane crash in the Alps. An Airbus A320 plummeting in the French Alps. 150 people now fear dead. Earlier today, there was a plane crash in the Alps. My other attorney, Amy, called and said there was a proof of life and that the police wanted me back at the station. I just was told by a detective an hour ago that the boyfriend was responsible for killing her. And now I'm saying, oh, she's alive. They said they want to send a message back. And they also want me to look at my phone, the phone that they've had in their possession since I called the police the day before. They bring out my phone. And then I hear my attorney's paralegal saying, Aaron, it's on airplane mode. And of course, if a device, as we all know, is on airplane mode, it's not receiving incoming messages. And as soon as he takes it off airplane mode, his phone explodes in a million text messages. Why would the police put your phone on airplane mode if that was the only means of communication from a kidnapper who has your girlfriend? Exactly. They're just leaving Denise to fend for herself. It's not just Aaron Quinn who's being interrogated. Police are also speaking with Denise's family. The kinds of questions they're asking seem to insinuate that they think this entire kidnapping might be staged. The detective asked Jane, has anything bad ever happened to Denise? I said, she was molested as a young girl. We were camping. The others had fallen asleep. And this adult kept after Denise. And according to court filings, the detective responds with a shocking theory. Detective Muster tells me that those that have this molestation happen want to relive it and experience the thrill of it again. I was dumbstruck. Detective Mustard has denied making this statement. She is clearly still alive. And rather than entertain the possibility that, oh my gosh, maybe this story is true, they immediately shift into, well, this must be a hoax. This morning, a shocking twist. Denise Huskins found safe in Huntington Beach. They had already decided she was dead. Denise Huskins was located safely at an undisclosed location. It was very inconvenient for them when she showed up alive. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.